private sector. It's going to compete with the private sector. That's the first issue I have. <clears throat> I'll turn to page 10 here. Because I want to talk about this adept enterprise, because people think enterprises in Colorado are kind of like Gucci purses or Michael Kors purses or something. They're fashionable. We got to have them. The adept enterprise shall reimburse from the fund, this five near six million dollar fund, in accordance with the rules adopted by the department pursuant to section 4225706, a third party provider that administers a driving examination, a third party provider seeking reimbursement from the adept enterprise shall apply for the reimbursement in the form and manner specified in rules adopted by the department Oh, wait, that's the department that said they didn't want it in committee. But now we're going to tell them, yep, you're going to do it. <clears throat> so now you got somebody coming over here asking for a reimbursement. Third party providers shall not charge an individual taking a driver's exam for an amount reimbursed under the subsection. So they've got this subsection where now they can't charge an individual. And here's the subsection. The debt enterprise shall determine the reimbursement amount for the third party provider based on the amount the third party provider charges for the driving examination, which charge must not be exceed any limit established in the rules adopted by department. So now we get into more government patrol and price fixing. Well, I had that conversation a little while ago. So now the government's going to set the market. <clears throat> Here we go again. Less the amount the individual taking the driving exam pays the third party provider for administering the driving, driving examination. Now, I had a person in my, I wasn't even going to talk about this, but I think I'm going to now. The person that does and did the driver's testing in my community, I know personally. Her husband is one of my best friends from high school. And she would say how nervous she would get riding with these young people in these cars to do the test. And if there was an accident, what the insurance, how the insurance would be settled. And that she would much rather have a third party do it that had the drivers, the vehicles, and the insurance already in place. That's right from my district. These are real people in real places saying, why are we doing this? They don't want it. <clears throat> now, if you want it in Fort Collins, have it, but don't give it to the rest of the state. Should this even be a state law? Should the state be even telling people how to do this? Should we be creating a multi-million dollar enterprise across the state? And then when we ask to have it featured all across the state in four different places, we say, no, we don't want to listen to you. We're just going to do it. <clears throat> the cost to the individual taking the driver's exam must not exceed, except as provided in the subsection of this section, $25 for driving examination if the individual taking the driving examination has not previously failed the examination. Now, I heard the bill sponsor talking about how it was so horrible that someone had to pay a fee for flunking the test. Well, wait a minute. They had to pay a fee because they had to retake the test. Well, if you fail the test, you fail the test. <laughs> Guess you get a redo. Get to redo it and repay it. That's life. That's life.
That's why you want to get things done the first time. You might have to do them two or three times. But the haste makes waste. Maybe they weren't ready. And then I'll just go a little farther down here. $50 for driving exams if the individual has previously failed the same driver's exam. To account for inflation or deflation, <laughs> deflation, that's interesting that we even have that in this bill. The governing board may annually adjust the amounts prescribed. Okay, so this governing board, we even talked about who should be on that governing board. And there's a lot of reasons why I can't get behind this. I just mentioned a few of them. I don't need to repeat it. I think we've talked it to death tonight. <clears throat> but no, I'm a strong no against this. I don't even know why we're doing this. Members, the question before us is the adoption of House Bill 1147. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. no. House Bill 1147 is adopted. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title of House Bill 1298. House Bill 1298 by Representative Sirota and Byrd, also Senators Bridges and Kirkmeyer. Concerning the date upon which the Department of Public Health and Environment must begin providing reimbursements to student public schools for costs associated with testing the lead content of drinking water. Representative Sirota. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move House Bill 1298. To the bill. Uh, Representative Sirota. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is just a small bill from the JBC to uh, ensure that we keep lead out of water in schools uh, for kids and uh, by moving up a date. Um, we had put a date in the bill last year that was a little too late. The money's already set aside and we just need to authorize the department to be able to expend it sooner. Ask for your I vote. Representative Bird. Good bill vote, yes. All right, is there any further discussion on House Bill 1298? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of House Bill 1298. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. House Bill 1298 is adopted. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title to House Bill 1300. House Bill 1300 by Representatives Byrd and Sirota, also Senators yes. Zenzinger and Kirkmeyer, concerning extending continuous eligibility medical coverage for certain individuals and in connection therewith, seeking federal authorization, making an appropriation. Representative Sirota. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move House Bill 1300 and the appropriations report. To the appropriations report. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. In House Appropriations, um, we made a couple of uh, technical changes uh, that were agreed upon with HICPUF and our counties, and I ask for an I vote. Is there any further discussion on the Appropriations Committee report? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of the Appropriations Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed, no. The Appropriations Committee report is adopted. To the bill. Representative Sirota. Um, um, uh, this is a great uh, bipartisan JBC bill um, that we bring to you today to allow the state to provide longer periods of continuous Medicaid and uh, Child Health Plan Plus coverage to narrow populations and study how to continue to improve the state Medicaid program to improve Coloradans health, financial security, and access to care. Colorado has been a national leader in maintaining health insurance coverage for eligible kids and families throughout the pandemic. It was one of five states that saw the largest gains in kids' health, um, health care coverage uh, between 2019 and 2021. And during COVID-19, during the public health emergency, longer periods of continuous coverage in our public health programs allowed more Coloradans to access and maintain health insurance. And this was especially important for children, the demographic most at risk for losing coverage due to administrative paperwork issues and processes and other under-resourced populations, such as those leaving prison for whom continuous coverage has been shown to improve health and reduce recidivism. Um, this is a really uh, excellent and feel-good bill uh, that we as the JBC worked on together. Um, we do have one small amendment, actually L003. Uh, so I move L003 and ask that it be displayed. Amendment L003 has been properly moved and is now displayed. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. L003 is just a small conforming amendment 
to the other technical changes that were made in the appropriations report, I ask for an I vote. Is there any further discussion on L003? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of L003. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. <laughs> Thank you. Amendment L003 is adopted. To the bill, Representative Byrd. I'll just say, members, thank you um, for your time. This is a great bill. It sets our state up to be a place where we are really making sure our most vulnerable to have the care that they need. So please join us and vote yes. Members, the question before us is the, is the um, I'm sorry, passage of House Bill 1300 as amended. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. <laughs> House Bill 1300 as amended is adopted. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title of House Bill 1017. House Bill 1017 by Representatives Kipp and Bockenfeld, also Senators Bridges and Van Winkle, concerning improvements to the electronic sales and use tax simplification system. Re <laughs> Representative Kipp. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I move HB 23-1017 and the Appropriations Committee report. To the Appropriations Committee report. In the Appropriations Committee report, we clarified what the appropriation was for and removed several items, and they gave us some money for it. Is there any further discussion on the Appropriations Committee report? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of the committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The Appropriations Committee report is adopted. To the bill, Representative Kipp. Thank you. Um, this bill, um, folks, came out of the sales and, oh, no, um, yeah, this one did. I'm sorry, I'm, it's late. It's been a long session. Um, this bill came out of the Sales and Use Tax Simplification Task Force on which um, Representative Bockenfeld and I are the legislative members from this chamber on that committee. And what we heard a lot about during that, um, the interim, when we were hearing about this, is that our sales and use tax system, which has made it easier for businesses to remit their sales and use taxes, it's better, but it's not there yet. It's clunky, it's hard to use, and we need it to be able to be easier to use if we wanted to be widely adopted and if we want people to be able to use it to remit their sales and use taxes easily. The reason this task force was started in the first place is Colorado has one of the most complex and annoying, frankly, systems of um, being able to remit sales and use tax in Colorado. There are some large businesses that actually have more than one full-time person to do that job. So we need it to be easier. We're trying to make it happen, and I am excited that Representative Bockenfeld joined me on this bill. Representative Bockenfeld. And I ask for an aye vote. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of House Bill 1017. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The no, the yeses have it. I'm sorry, I was a little distracted by the cat in the corner. Uh, House Bill 1017 is adopted. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title of Senate Bill 157. Senate Bill 157 by Senators Coleman and Baisley, also Representatives Martinez and Charbini, concerning the continuation of the offender reentry grant program and in connection therewith, implementing the recommendations in the Department of Regulatory Agencies 2022 Sunset Report. Representative Charbini. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Members, we ask you to support this bill. This is a... Can you oh, move sorry, the bill, I, please? I move, sorry. I move Senate Bill 23157. To the bill. Uh, members, we ask you to support this bill because this is a great program that helps inmates make sure that they don't come back. Um, we know that education helps people uh, prevent, their, prevent recidivism, and so we're asking you to help support this bill and this program that's already been going on and is recommended to continue because it's having great success, and so we hope you can support it. Representative Martinez. In the words of my esteemed Republican colleague, good bill, vote yes. All right, is there any further discussion on Senate Bill 157? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Senate Bill 157. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Aye. Senate Bill 157 is adopted. Mr. Schievel, please read the title to Senate Bill 160. Senate Bill 160 by Senators Fields and Winter F, also Representatives Mabry and Lynch. 
Okay. Concerning the continuation of the Community Crime Victims Grant Program and in connection therewith, implementing the recommendations of the 2022 Sunset Report on the Community Crime Victims Grant Program by the Department of Regulatory Agencies. Represent, er, I'm sorry, Minority Leader Lynch. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move Senate Bill 23160. To the bill. Representative Mabry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members, I am honored to stand here with our minority leader uh, in bringing uh, Senate Bill 23160 to uh, continue the Community Crime Victims Grant Program. This program is uh, particularly important to me because it serves victims that are in my community. Uh, this, this money goes to nonprofits to make sure uh, that uh, direct services are going to um, victims of crime um, and they're receiving uh, mental health services. This, this program um, helps men of color, communities, uh, communities of color deal with the aftermath of crime and I believe that this is essential in our strategy to keep our communities safe. Uh, we don't want victims of crime in the path uh, to then um, become those who commit crimes and, and the community service grants that are administered through this program um, help prevent um, help prevent that and um, uh, we urge an I vote. Minority Leader Lynch. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so, th for those of you that didn't attend the committee, uh, this was a this was a great hearing where we actually got to see members of the community where this where this impacted them, and this is a, a, a is a good example of great return on investment. This is money that we throw into the community. We have folks that are benefiting from this program by, by being a part of the community that is trying to fix, fix the issues within it. And, and this is good governance. This is, this is the way it should be. Um, money that's spent on this, we see returned in a bunch of ways because when we're really fixing the problem of somebody being a victim, a lot of times those victims sometimes become the perpetrators and if we can stop that vicious cycle of these people being victimized, we can do good things in this, in this state. So I would urge a yes vote. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, members, the question before us is the adoption of Senate Bill 160. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 160 is adopted. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title of Senate Bill 165. Senate Bill 165 by Senators Sullivan and Danielson, also Representative Ricks, concerning the continuation of the regulation of racing and in connection therewith, continuing the division of racing events in the Department of Revenue, continuing the activities of the Colorado Racing Commission, and implementing recommendations contained in the 2022 Sunset Report by the Department of Regulatory Agencies. Representative Ricks. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move SB 165. To the bill. This bill is a sunset bill that involves Arapaho Park racing and basically extends the sunset date to 2032. Is there any further discussion on Senate Bill 165? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Senate Bill 165. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, aye. no. House bills one, I'm sorry, Senate Bill 165 is adopted. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title of Senate Bill 72. Senate Bill 72 by Senator Rodriguez, also Representatives Epps and Soper, concerning the continuation of the Defense Council on First Appearance Grant Program and in connection therewith, implementing the recommendations in the 2022 Sunset Report by the Department of Regulatory Agencies and making an appropriation. Representative Soper. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move Senate Bill 72. To the bill. And uh, to the bill. Thank you. Uh, so in House Judiciary, um, where we have first presented the bill, and, and by the way, uh, Representative Epps was going to be here, but uh, sends her regards. I'm here, I'm here. Oh, oh, you're here. Hey, welcome. Uh, did you want to go first? Representative Epps. I, I trust you fully, comrade. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Representative Soper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do object to that, but uh, it's, it's nice. <laughs> uh, so with the... Uh, um, the grant program that's being uh, extended here, it's really important for our municipalities that they have the ability to uh, tap these resources to be able to provide 
a defense counsel for first appearances. It's part of our criminal justice system. Uh, yes, it may be at the lowest level, at the municipal level, but it still is important that uh, Coloradans have the ability to have an attorney uh, if they're being accused of a crime, even a low-level crime, and we'd ask for a yes vote. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Senate Bill 72. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, aye. no. Yeah. Senate Bill 72 is adopted. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title of Senate Bill 177. Senate Bill 177 by Senators Robertson Simpson, also Representatives McCormick and Catlin, concerning the funding of Colorado Water Conservation Board projects and in connection therewith, making an appropriation. Representative McCormick. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move Senate Bill 177 and the Appropriations Committee report. To the Appropriations Committee report. Thank you, Madam Chair. In the Appropriations Committee, um, we had to combine two funds into one because it made it either easier for the Department of Natural Resources. And I urge an I vote. Is there any further discussion on the Appropriations Committee report? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of the committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, aye. no. The Appropriations Committee report is adopted. To the bill, Representative McCormick. Thank you, Madam Chair. This bill is a really important bill that comes annually um, to appropriate funding for very important water projects across our state. Um, that comes from the Colorado Water Conservation Board Construction Fund, the Severance Tax Perpetual Base Fund, the Water Plan Implementation Cash Fund, as well as um, Colorado Parks and Wildlife Wildlife Cash Funds. And these projects that are in your bill are a result of our water plan in action. The projects on this list align with our water plan goals and object objectives and certainly reflect the values of our state, which are vibrant communities, thriving watersheds, robust agriculture, and resilient planning. Um, these projects have gone through an eight-month process to be vetted. They're very, very important. This funding mechanism is important, and I ur urge an I vote on this bill. Representative Catlin. Thank you, Madam Chair. These are the kind of things that we need to do in the state of Colorado. Water is um, front and center this year and has been for a number of years. CWCB projects list are the kind of things the state of Colorado needs to, to continue doing, and that's what this bill will do, is to carry forward the funding for those kind of projects. Everything from satellite mon monitoring, floodplain risk management, weather modification, Fish and Wildlife Resources Fund, the Colorado Watershed Restoration Program, water forecasting projects and, and, project and partnerships. These are the kind of things that the state of Colorado has been doing for a long time. These, these are the projects that keep Colorado at the forefront of the water world. We all know that we're at the top of the world, and uh, being at the top of the world means we need to do a top of the world job taking care of the water that we have in this state. These are the projects that are helping the state of Colorado. They'll help you and your districts. It's a good bill. Vote yes. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Senate Bill 177. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 177 is adopted. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title of House Bill 1226. House Bill 1226 by Representative Soper and Degree Kennedy, also Senators Robertson Will. Concerning transparency requirements for hospitals and in connection to the earth, creating more timely submissions of data, providing insights into transfers of cash and profits and reserves, including those leaving Colorado, reporting on all information received, reporting information by each hospital in addition to health systems, disclosing executive compensation, including compensated incentives, reporting mergers and acquisitions of hospitals and physicians, and reporting investments in capital equipment and construction. Representative Soper. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move House Bill 1226 and the appropriations and um, Health and Insurance Committee reports. All right, to the appropriations report. Represent, repre, uh, I'm sorry, Speaker Pro Tem Kennedy, Degree Kennedy, wow. Thank you, you, Madam Chair. Uh, in the Appropriations Committee, we had a cash fund and federal fund appropriation for two FTE, and we asked for an I vote. All right, is there any further discussion on the Appropriations Committee report? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of the committee report. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The committee report is adopted. 
to the Health and Insurance Committee report. Speaker Pro Tem, Degree Kennedy. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move Amendment L13 and ask that it be displayed. Amendment L013 has been properly moved. Thank you, Madam Chair. It is Chair. now displayed. Please proceed. Sorry to jump the gun. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this amendment uh, makes a handful of changes to the Health and Insurance Committee report, including restructuring language around out-of-state transfers, uh, changing the way we re require hospitals to report their statements cash flow from quarterly to annually, and putting guardrails on how the quarterly data is to be used. We ask for your support. Is there any further discussion on Amendment L013? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Amendment L013. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The amendment is adopted. To the committee report. Speaker Pro Tem, Degree Kennedy. Thank you, Madam Chair. In the Health and Insurance Committee, we made numerous changes as the result of stakeholding, and we ask for your support. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of the Health and Insurance Committee report. Those, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those, all, those opposed, no. All right, the Health and Insurance Committee report is adopted. To the bill, Speaker Pro Tem Degree Kennedy. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move Amendment L14 and ask that it be displayed. Amendment L014 has been properly moved and is now displayed. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. This amendment brings uh, some information into alignment with the amendment we just made to the H&I Committee report about the historical transfers of uh, cash out of state. We ask for your support. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Amendment L014. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Amendment L014 is adopted. To the bill, Representative Soper. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members, um, House Bill 1226 really builds on the work that Representative uh, Kennedy did, or Degree Kennedy, uh, did back in 2019. Uh, in that year, it was House Bill 19 1001. And it's really important as policymakers that we have uh, good data and data to be able to see the um, fiscal health of our hospitals, um, to know just how many hospitals really are on the cusp of failing if they're small hosp hospitals. But we're also the tail of two cities. So we also have some of the most profitable healthcare uh, systems in America. And to be able to see, are they overcharging uh, Coloradans for the sole purpose of moving that money out of state to subsidize their operations around the nation? Because we shouldn't be treated as a cash cow. And then, uh, likewise, to look at the value of uh, nonprofit hospitals and to make sure that uh, they really are um, nonprofit hospitals and not Fortune 500 companies. So that's, uh, that's what our transparency bill does uh, in a nutshell. It really is about uh, transparency and ensuring that we as lawmakers have good data to make decisions in the future. And we'd ask for a yes vote. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of House Bill 1226 as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. House Bill 1226 as amended is adopted. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title of Senate Bill 005. Senate Bill 5 by Senators Hawkes, Lewis, and Cutter, also Representatives Lynch and Snyder, concerning measures to expand the forestry workforce and in connection therewith, directing the Colorado State Forest Service to develop educational materials for high school students about career opportunities in forestry and wildfire mitigation, creating a timber forest health and wildfire mitigation industries workforce development program to help fund internships in those industries, allocating general fund money to the wildfire mitigation capacity development fund, authorizing the expansion and creation of forestry programs, directing the State Board of Community Colleges and Occupational Education to administer a program to recruit wildland fire prevention and mitigation educators and making an appropriation. Well done, Mr. Schiebel. All right, Representative Snyder. Thank you, Madam Chair. I didn't quite catch that title. Could we have it maybe read a second time? No, oh, never mind. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, Senate Bill 5. Sir, can you please uh, move the bill first? Oh, yeah. Why don't we go ahead and move Senate Bill 5? All right, to the bill, Representative Snyder. Thank you. So a brief introduction before we have a short little amendment to take care of. But just to let you know, Senate Bill 5 came out of the Interim uh, Wildfire Matters Review Committee. And it basically, we heard testimony through that, that interim of meetings that there's a severe shortage of people working in the wildfire mitigation space totally across the board. Everything from forestry and timber products to actually having people to get out and do mitigation projects. So the, the real intent of this bill is to create 
uh, educational program, courses at, at all types of public institutions. Originally, it was just Colorado Mountain College and community colleges. That's now been opened up to all public institutions and even an outreach program down to the high school level to start getting young people excited about getting a job, <clears throat> working out in the outdoors, in the wild, and making a real difference for Colorado. Minority Leader Lynch. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I have a 14-page uh, document here that I'd like to read to kind of get you guys up to speed on what's really going on with our workforce in the wildfire management agency. So just bear with me. It's good information. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, uh, uh, honestly, this, this bill came out of uh, Wildfires Matter. Really, it was part of two bills. It started as two bills that one, one helps bolster up our, uh, our timber industry. Uh, the other is this one, which allows us to, to encourage folks that aren't currently uh, knowledgeable about the field of, of working with forest management and working in the timber industry. Uh, this bill does a lot to get those folks back into that business and help us uh, recover from fire, wildfires when we, have, uh, when we have wildfires and we have uh, leftover um, debris, there's no place to take it right now. This, this bill will help us with, with building up the workforce. We need to move that forward. That being said, I have a very exciting amendment that I would like to move. I would like to move Amendment L005 to Senate Bill 5 and ask Amend that it's properly displayed. Amendment L005 has been moved and is properly displayed and is unfortunately not 14 pages. Please proceed, Minority Leader Lynch. Thank you, Madam Chair. So all this, all this does is it really is a truly uh, technical amendment in that we referenced on the page four, line 17, the wrong section of law, and we would just like to uh, refer this to the right section of law from uh, 23, or 20, uh, 2433.5 to dash 202 to 1202, so we forgot a one in there. We'd like for that to be fixed. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Amendment L005. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Amendment L005 is adopted. To the bill, Representative Snyder. Thank you, Madam Chair. So as, as we said, this bill is really designed to uh, increase young people's interest and people working out in the field. Uh, there's an internship program the Forest Service will be doing with the timber industry. And you may think, well, why would we be subsidizing one particular industry? But I think what we've learned over the last decade or more, it's all interconnected. So if we can gear timber industry to have them do work that really serves as thinning our forests and making them less capable of getting to that destructive level of fire, that benefits everybody. Uh, there's funding for wildfire mitigation and a recruiting wildfire prevention educators, high school and college level training. And with that, I would ask for your I vote on Senate Bill 5. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Senate Bill 5 as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 5 as amended as is adopted. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title of Senate Bill 44. Senate Bill 44 by Senators Janal and Pelton R, also Representatives McCormick and Winter, <laughs> concerning updates to the Veterinary Education Loan Repayment Program. Representative McCormick. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move Senate Bill 44. To the bill. Representative McCormick. Thank you, Madam Chair. This bill is really Thank super you. exciting, everyone. Um, this bill. The Veterinary Education Loan Repayment Program has been in existence since um, 2017, um, and it's helped some veterinarians pay off their school loan. But what makes it exciting this year is that we were able to up the amount of applicants that can participate from four people to six, and also um, allow graduates from veterinary schools, not only the one premier school here in our state at CSU, but other veterinary schools across the nation, um, come here to Colorado to um, incentivize them to go out to our rural communities where we are at in desperate need of veterinarians um, for our food animal um, 
medicine folks. And we were also able to up the amount that these students will help repay, repay their loans. And what's really cool about this program is that it's graduated out so that they get so much repaid the first year that they're in a rural community and so much the second and third and fourth year till it completely um, pays off about 90, actually $90,000 of their um, loan. So super important. Um, we are in a severe shortage here in our state and across the nation. And this is one way where we can incentivize our veterinary graduates to um, pick a rural community to start their practice and build their families and hopefully stay there forever. So I urge an I vote on Senate Bill 44. Representative Winter. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a very important piece of legislation for rural Colorado. People don't realize just how important having big animal vets is in rural Colorado and the shortage that we face right now. I have constituents that are constantly telling me stories about how they have to travel two, three, four hours, even sometimes out of state, to get their animals treated by a veterinarian. Um, with the cost of animals, the investment that these farmers and ranchers put in that, and not only that, the emotional investment that they put in their livestock and what they do for their everyday life, this is a great piece of legislation. And not only that, these vets move into these communities and they become part of the family. I can tell you right now, I was on the county fair board and these vets go to the county fairs, they participate in 4-H and FFA and they really become part of the community. This is one chance, in the famous words of my uh, good representative from Akron, that we can truly get together and bridge the urban rule divide. I urge a yes vote. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Senate Bill 44. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Senate Bill 44 is adopted. Mr. Shebel, please read the title to Senate Bill 161. Senate Bill 161 by Senators Fenberg and Will, also Representatives Lynch and McCluskey, concerning state funding to finance the purchase of a firefighting aircraft to respond to wildfires. Minority Leader Lynch. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move Senate Bill 161. To the bill. Yeah. Minority Leader Lynch. Thank you, Madam Chair. So in our state right now, we have a, um, a few wildfires here and there. And this, this uh, allows us to, to fight those fires with literally the state of the art, best equipment that's out there that we have not had in the state of Colorado. Uh, we we have one firehawk that's on its way, which is running late, I might add. And um, but the, the problem is we've got two sides of this state, one for the western slope and one for the front range. This will allow us to take advantage of a unique opportunity that the state of Colorado has right now, because these helicopters take forever to get, and this will allow us to get a second one and get it online. Um, as quick as it can be done in the United States of America, um, and I would ask for a yes vote. Speaker McCluskey. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's an honor to serve with you. And an honor to serve with you. I am delighted to be here with Minority Leader Lynch. It was just a few years ago that we came before the body to ask for funding for the first Firehawk. Uh, that was on the heels of the Cameron Peak Fire, the East Troublesome Fire, since then, we've had devastating fires, uh, most notably the Marshall Fire. And clear to all of us, Colorado is a higher, hotter, drier state. And certainly, so many of our homes and properties are in that wildland urban interface. More than two million properties in Colorado <laughs> have some risk of being affected by wildfire. We know early detection is key. We know suppressing those fires when they are, before they receive a name, is key to stopping devastating wildfires in the state. So another firehawk gives us, doubles our advantage in being able to tackle firehawks early on. With that, we ask for an I vote. I'm a little nervous about what's going on up here. <laughs> Representative Weinberg. So. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, reading the bill at length and uh, fiscal notes, is that appropriate at this time, ma'am? I would, I would like to take this moment very briefly for the next couple hours 
I don't know if you know this about me, but I don't like to go home. I love these chambers, and I love all of you. <laughs> but very simply, I've asked, since I typically cannot go past one minute and 30, 13 seconds at this chamber, our colleague from El Paso County, who can typically do roughly three hours until midnight, so I would like to introduce my colleague from El Paso County, Mr. Scott Bottoms. Representative Bottoms. That is representative to you, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would like to represent my uh, constituents by introducing uh, Representative Armagost. Representative Armagost. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I think the best way to address what we uh, were needing to say about this could probably be best handled by my representative colleague from Weld County, Representative Evans. Representative Evans. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, mostly, I've convened this meeting here uh, as a former UH-60 Blackhawk pilot, which is what the Firehawk is based on. I just wanted the record to reflect that this is the finest airframe uh, in existence right now, and particularly superior to any aircraft, uh, maybe made by Boeing that ends in 64. Representative Hartsook. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just like to jump out of the aircraft. I think that's a blast. And this is, oh, by the way, great bill. Vote yes. Is there any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Senate Bill 161. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. 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 Ooh, tough no. call. Senate Bill 161 is adopted. Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the committee rise and report. You ready? The chamber has spoken. We will rise and report. The House will come back to order. Representative Lindsay. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Before we finish up, it's been a busy week and we've not done our normal Capitol Choir. Um, so if everybody wants to come down and sing, we've got some birthdays to celebrate. Representative um, Lindsay, we do want to do this, absolutely. But we need to first finish out our business. Okay. I'm so sorry. Okay, members, back to work. Mr. Schiebel, please read the report of the Committee of the Whole. Madam Speaker, your Committee of the Whole begs leave to report it as under consideration the following touch bills, being the second reading of the Reverend making the following recommendations thereon. House Bill 1013 is amended, 1017 is amended, 1088 is amended, 1147 is amended, 1226 is amended, 1269 is amended, 1272 is amended, 1298, 1300 as amended, passed on second reading, order gross and placed on the calendar for third reading, final passage. Senate Bill 5 is amended, 44, 72, 157, 160, 161, 165, 177 is amended, passed on second reading, order revised and placed on the calendar for third reading, and final passage. Representative Wilford. You have heard the motion. There are amendments at the desk. Mr. Schiebel, please read the Bottoms Amendment to the Committee of the Whole report. Representative Bottoms moved to amend the report of the Committee of the Whole to reverse the action taken by the committee in not adopting the following Frizzell Amendment, L45 to House Bill 1272, to show that said amendment passed that House Bill 1272 is amended passed. Representative Bottoms. 
I'd like to move this amendment to the report of the committee of the whole and have uh, it displayed. Thank you. It is properly displayed. Basically, I ran this amendment just to try to protect the e-bike sellers from um, having to have so, so much extra expense just waiting, uh, sitting out there, that they're carrying this um, for, for the uh, purchaser for the tax credits. And I think this is going to harm the, the uh, business owners. And so I urge an I vote on this amendment. Representative Weissman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, it's been a few hours now, but we did have a discussion about this point. Previously, I'm going to ask for a no vote on this cow. We have given careful attention all the way through the amendment process, all the way into this morning about how the e-bike part of this goes. The retailer claims the credit, uh, and, and again, they, they can. They don't have to participate in all that, but the retailer claims the credit. We are going to be standing up advanced payments on a quarterly basis to facilitate the flow of funds to address these cash flow concerns, which are not invalid, uh, on top of which the Energy Office is going to be working with retailers in the bicycle community uh, for other sorts of lending facilities to smooth out the cash flow, even beyond the quarterly payments. Uh, we believe we have tried very hard to see to these concerns. We're asking for a no vote on this cow. Seeing no further discussion, the question before us is the adoption of the Bottoms Amendment to the Committee of the Whole Report. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Representative Garcia, how do you vote? No. Representative Garcia votes no. Representative Morrow, how do you vote? No. Representative Morrow votes no. Representative Epps, how do you vote? No. Representative Epps votes no. Representative Sirota, how do you vote? No. Representative Sirota votes no. Representative Herod, how do you vote? No. Representative Herod votes no. Madam Speaker? Representative Ricks, how do you vote? No. Representative Ricks votes no. Please close the machine. With 19 I, 42 no, and four excuse, the Bottoms Amendment is lost. Mr. Schiebel, please read the Bradley Amendment to the Committee of the Whole Report. Representative Bradley moved to amend the report of the Committee of the Whole to reverse section taken by the committee not adopting the following for Zell Amendment, L40 to House Bill 1272, to show that said amendment passed that House Bill 1272 is amended passed. Representative Bradley. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move to amend the report of the Committee of the Whole. It's the Bradley Amendment. <laughs> you have moved the Bradley Amendment yes, to the Committee of the Whole Report, and sure it is do. properly displayed. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, there's no reason with a continuous appropriation this big that we should not have a three-year sunset provision. I realize the bill sponsors say that they stay cold. We say that all the time. This affects rural Colorado. It affects a lot of different communities other than Boulder and Denver, and there's no reason that we shouldn't be accountable with such a big price tag to have a sunset on this in three years to see if we're doing right by the people of Colorado. I urge a yes vote. Thank you. Representative Weissman. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Going to ask for a no vote. Continuous appropriation really goes to spending authority out of various funds, and that's not really what's at issue here. What is at issue is the length of the tax credits. We chose the length of the tax credits that we did in the bill because we need to send clear and durable signals to uh, the markets in Colorado that we will have a stable policy environment uh, in order to promote adoption of new technologies to save people money on transportation, heating, uh, other things, and to bring uh, job-creating businesses to the state. For these reasons, I'm going to ask for a no vote. Seeing no further discussion, the question before us is the adoption of the Bradley Amendment to the Committee of the Whole Report. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Representative Garcia, how do you vote? No. Representative Garcia votes no. Representative Morrow, how do you vote? No. Representative Morrow votes no. Representative Sirota, how do you vote? No. Representative Sirota votes no. Representative Epps, how do you vote? No. no. Representative Ricks, how do you vote? No. no. Representative Ricks votes no. Oh, 
Representative Herod is excused. Please close the machine. With 19 aye, 41 no, and five excused, the Bradley Amendment is lost. Mr. Schiebel, please read the Evans Amendment to the Committee of the Whole report. Representative Evans moved to amend the report of the Committee of the Whole to reverse action taken by the committee in not adopting the following Evans Amendment, L52 to House Bill 1272 to show that Senate passed that House Bill 1272 is amended passed. Representative Evans. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move the first Evans Amendment to the report of the Committee of the Whole and ask for it to be displayed. It is properly displayed. Please, please proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So as we discussed, this amendment strikes sections 15 and 16 from um, the bill, and those are the sections that deal with the severance tax. So without going through the whole long uh, explanation before, legislation from last year said, let's not mess with the severance tax. And now that we're messing with the severance tax again to the tune of uh, effectively $70 million over the next three years, it just makes it really, really hard for industry to feel like they can negotiate in good faith and come to a compromise if we're going to mess with that again the next, the next year and the next year and the next year. It, is, uh, it particularly impacts uh, my district since this is a major uh, revenue stream for my district, uh, which ultimately boils down to schools and roads and bridges and community stuff. And so uh, for that reason, because we had legislation last year that says don't mess with it, um, I would ask for a I vote. Representative Weissman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, I'm going to ask for a no vote. We have negotiated extensively in good faith with representatives of the industry about these provisions of the bill. We have amended it in response to things that we have heard from them. Uh, work is ongoing about uh, bigger conversations about the severance tax and the out-of-alarm credit pursuant to legislation last year. I ask for a no vote. Representative Holtor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And to the bill sponsor, I want to know why this, I want him to understand why this is so important. And he was in the committee, I believe. The industry continues to see the goalposts moved. We can't go a year after passing legislation and saying, hey, we're going to do this. I'll wait. You good? Oh, okay. I didn't know I was going to wait and pose. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we sit here and promulgate legislation and say we want a signal to industry. We want to create a predictable signal so we can foster and, and do certain things. And then every year we can't sit on our hands long enough because we've got to bring back more legislation and change and pass more things. There's no predictability in the energy space when you do that. None. I wasn't in the committee, but I was told that that was even presented in the committee. But are we listening? That's a question. That's a big question and not a rhetorical question. I've even had departments tell me, department liaisons tell me that we're passing legislation so fast they can't even react to it. They can't even write the rules because we're running this horse so fast around the track because we got to do all this stuff. Now what really kind of gets a burr in my saddle is the fact that he's got an amendment here and nobody's listening. And it's a good one. Just look at it. I'll be a yes. Seeing no further discussion. The question before us is the adoption of the Evans Amendment to the Committee of the Whole Report. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Representative Garcia, how do you vote? No. Representative Garcia votes no. Representative Morrow, how do you vote? Representative Morrow, how do you vote? We'll come back. Representative Ricks, how do you vote? No. Representative Ricks votes no. Representative Sirota, how do you vote? No. Representative Sirota votes no. Representative Epps, how do you vote? No. Representative Epps votes no. Representative Morrow, how do you vote? No. Representative Morrow votes no. Please close the machine. With 21 aye, 39 no, and 5 excused, the Evans Amendment is lost. 
Mr. Schiebel, please read the Frizzell Amendment to the Committee of the Whole report. Representative Frizzell moved to amend the report of the Committee of the Whole to reverse the action taken by the Committee in not adopting the following Frizzell Amendment, L42 to House Bill 1272, to show that Senate passed that House Bill 1272 is amended passed. Representative Frizzell. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move the Frizzell Amendment to the Committee of the Whole and ask for it be, to be properly displayed. It is displayed. Please proceed. Thank you, ma'am. Colleagues, I ran this amendment which sunsets these tax credits after a five-year period. I have many concerns about this bill. We've talked about a lot of them. But one thing that I think is really important is we are creating, this bill creates a massive, massive spending program that lasts for years and years and years, and there's virtually no guardrails for, for testing the success and or the effectiveness of this program. I'm very concerned about that. I believe that five years is plenty time to kick the tires on this deal. Hopefully, ho hopefully make, make changes along the way as this particular piece of legislation candidly feels cobbled together with bailing wire and duct tape given the number of amendments that have been passed in the last couple of weeks. Just today, we saw almost 10. So I ask for a yes vote on this amendment. Thank you. Representative Weissman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Going to ask for a no vote. We talked about guardrails. Here are some guardrails. There are absolute caps on the amount of tax credits that can be certificated by the Energy Office in a given year for a number of the different provisions in this bill. One, two, we have uh, tax expenditure statements pursuant to law so that the Office of the State Auditor has specific direction by which to evaluate what's going on in here when they do evaluate tax expenditures on a rolling basis as we have directed them to do. Three, we added an amendment previously in the process to direct reporting by the Energy Office to legislative oversight committees on an annual basis so that there's an ongoing touch point to all of us. Here, I ask for a no vote. Seeing no further discussion, the question before us is the adoption of the Frizzell Amendment to the Committee of the Whole Report. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Representative Garcia, how do you vote? No. Representative Garcia votes no. Representative Morrow, how do you vote? No. Representative Morrow votes no. Representative Epps, how do you vote? No. Representative Epps votes no. Representative Sirota, how do you vote? No. Representative Sirota votes no. Representative Ricks, how do you vote? No. Representative Ricks votes no. Representative Herod, how do you vote? No. Representative Herod votes no. Please close the machine. With 19 I, 42 no, and four excused, the Frizzell Amendment is lost. Mr. Schiebel, please read the Holtorf Amendment to the Committee of the Whole Report. Representative Holtorf moved to amend the report of the Committee of the Whole to reverse the action taken by the committee in not adopting the following winter amendment, L30 to House Bill 1272, to show that Senate Amendment passed that House Bill 1272 is amended passed. Representative Holtorf. Madam Speaker, I'd like to move the Holtorf Amendment to the Committee of the Whole and ask that it be displayed. It is properly displayed. Please proceed. Thank you. This uh, just starts this uh, particular program and allows it to go into effect on the new gas wells and oil wells after January 1st, 2024, in order to help uh, Eastern Weld County and the other counties in my district. Representative Weissman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, uh, I ask for a no vote. Again, we've had extensive discussions with the industry about this. We do appreciate their active engagement and participation. I also have a concern whether this could even be administrated on a per well basis starting 1-1 one, one of 24. I ask for a no vote. Seeing no further discussion, the question before us is the adoption of the Holtorf Amendment 
to the Committee of the Whole Report. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Representative Garcia, how do you vote? No. Representative Garcia votes no. Representative Morrow, how do you vote? No. Representative Morrow votes no. Representative Epps, how do you vote? No. no. Representative Epps votes no. Representative Sirota, how do you vote? No. Representative Sirota votes no. Representative Ricks, how do you vote? No. Representative Ricks votes no. Representative Herod, how do you vote? No. Representative Herod votes no. Please close the machine. With 20 aye, 41 no, and four excused, the whole Torf Amendment is lost. Mr. Schiebel, please read the Taggart Amendment to the Committee of the Whole Report. Representative Taggart moved to amend the report of the Committee of the Whole to reverse the action taken by the committee in not adopting the following Fizell Amendment, L28, to House Bill 1272, to show that said amendment passed at House Bill 1272 as amended passed. Representative Taggart. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move the Taggart Amendment to the Committee of the Whole, or excuse me, to the report of the Committee of the Whole. It is properly displayed. Please proceed. I think it's important when we um, talk about a particular um, type of vehicle, in this particular case, it's an electric bicycle, that we refer to it in indus industry terms. An industry has broken down electric bikes into three classes. Class one, which is a pedal assist, class two and class three, which are throttle um, uh, electric bicycles. Now, why is that important? It's also important that we're always consistent in the laws that come out of this particular body. And in this particular case, ordinances and the statute allow for class one vehicles on trails. They don't allow for class two and class three. And when we talked about this a little bit earlier, folks said, well, it makes it easier um, if folks can still buy and get this credit on class two and class three. That puts every one of those riders in a difficult position because if they get on a trail where they're not supposed to be on a trail with a class two or class three bike, they could find themselves in trouble with authorities. By far, class one is the biggest group of electric bikes sold. And it is the assist, the pedal assist as compared to throttle. We just need to be consistent when we pass legislation. And I don't understand the argument at all of adding two, um, class two and class three, and not to follow industry standards makes no sense to me whatsoever. Representative Weissman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm gonna ask for a no vote. Respectfully, we, we are following industry standards. Class one, two, and three exist in law already. They exist in industry practice already. Uh, it is true that different municipalities will make different reference to class one, two, and three bikes and their regulations of what all you can ride where. We are not inventing the two and three classifications in this bill. They've been in law, they remain in law. We're not changing those. We ask for a no vote because we want to preserve the options for riders to buy the bike that is right for them for their use case to understand the applicable laws where they're gonna be riding. We trust cyclists to evaluate all of that with reference to the tax credit as we have to now. Again, we're not changing one, two, and three. That's existing law. We also want bicycle retailers to be able to sell the broadest universe of uh, bicycles uh, to be eligible for the tax credit and not to put them in the position of, oh, I, 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 some of these will get the credit and some won't. We want the most flexibility we can have for riders and small businesses. Please vote no. Seeing no further discussion, the question before us is the adoption of the Taggart Amendment to the Committee of the Whole Report. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Representative Garcia, how do you vote? No. Representative Garcia votes no. Representative Morrow, how do you vote? No. Representative Morrow votes no. Representative Epps, how do you vote? No. Representative Epps votes no. Representative Sirota, how do you vote? No. Representative Sirota votes no. Representative Ricks, how do you vote? 
No. Representative Ricks votes no. Representative Herod, how do you vote? No. Representative Herod votes no. Please close the machine. With 21 aye, 40 no, and four excuse, the Taggart Amendment is lost. <laughs> Mr. Schiebel, please read the Winter Amendment to the Committee of the Whole Report. Representative Winter moved to amend the report of the Committee to the Whole to reverse the action taken by the Committee in not adopting the following Winter Amendment, L25 to House Bill 1272, to show that said amendment passed that House Bill 1272 is amended passed. Representative Winter. I move the Winter Amendment to the report of the Committee Whole and ask that it properly be displayed. It is displayed. Please proceed. Members, um, I'd, I'd ask for your attention on this amendment. I ask for a yes vote on this amendment. I think it is morally wrong to use taxpayer dollars to purchase products that contain rare earth metals that have been by, obtained by child slave labor. These children are being exploited for the benefit of environmental justice. Let that sink in. Exploited for the benefit of environmental justice. In this chamber, I hear all the time how the Colorado legislator is passing groundbreaking legislation. The Colorado is paving the way. Wouldn't we be doing that by voting yes on this amendment? Wouldn't we be following in the spirit of what we talk about in here? To stand up and say, Colorado says no? Wouldn't we be giving a chance for the free market to look at these countries and say, we can do it better, and we're going to stop the practices that you use by using these children to profit off of American dollars, Colorado taxpayer dollars? I have to go back to my district and talk to my constituents. And this is something that I don't want to be able, or I have to explain to them. To me, a no vote says that we are once again picking winners and losers. And this time, children are the losers. Why wouldn't we vote yes for this amendment? This is a chance to do what is right and not what is popular. You're going to hear reasons why to vote no. Let's, pot, let's stop. Let's not put politics over people tonight. I ask you when you put that button that you vote your conscience on this amendment. Once again, I ask you when you push this button, you vote with your conscience. I urge a yes vote. Representative Taggart. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in support of this. And I'll use the word consistency again here, even though it failed in the last one. We have had federal laws on this subject since the late 1990s because of problems that companies like Nike, which got the, got the vast majority of the publicity for child labor issues in the Pacific Rim. Because of that, federal law came about that was sent to all of us as public corporations, which all these automotive companies are in fact public corporations, that we had to have codes of ethics within our companies that said we were not going to do business with people either in this country out or outside of this country that employed child labor. And the federal government went a step further. They said they had every right to audit this. And because of that, we wrote into all of our contracts as public companies, we wrote into every single contract that we did business with people overseas in those contracts that said they were not to do this and we reserve the right to audit at any time with absolutely no uh, pri prior warning to come into those businesses to check on that. I commend Representative Winner. This is in federal law. 
for us not to follow it as a state, I just can't imagine it. It just doesn't make sense again, and I'm sorry to say that, but if there's federal law, the state new bills should follow federal law. And this is already in place since the late 1990s. Representative Evans. Thank you, Madam Speaker. 160 million children globally are involved in child labor. In this country, you can have coffee that is held to a higher standard. Fair Trade America is a label that can be attached to different products to certify that these products were produced without negative practices to include things like child labor. And I think that it's critically important that if we are going to stand up for those who have no voice, if we are going to push forward with the best technologies that we want to develop, that we at least hold it to the standard of fair trade coffee. I would ask for an I vote on this amendment. Representative Weissman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I'm gonna say two different sorts of things about this amendment. When the US Congress passed the Inflation Reduction Act and had tax credits about electric vehicles, that was to do two things. Yes, it was to make electric vehicles uh, more affordable by means of tax policy, and that's gonna kick in real soon. It was also to use the legislative power of the US on the global stage to shift the market by putting domestic production and related requirements on what vehicles were going to get the tax credits. Because we are such a large economic power in the world, this is going to start to change how vehicles are made. That's the point. I see the head shaking. Minimum battery percentage, sorry, minimum percentage of battery components produced or manufactured in North America starting at 50% fiscal year 23, rising to 100% before the end of the decade. Minimum percentage of critical minerals extracted, processed, or recycled in nations with free trade agreements. Now, free trade agreements can be a bit mixed, but there are some labor and environmental standards in those starting at 40%, fiscal 23, rising to 80% before the end of the decade. There's also a concept in federal law, 42 USC 18741, if you want to look it up, called entities of concern about sourcing of batteries. IRA excludes entities of concern, including currently China and Russia, from sourcing of these critical minerals relative to the tax credit. I'm talking about federal law because this is going to have a lot to do with the vehicles that, in fact, are available from dealers in Colorado to even be bought and, and to benefit from our tax credits. That's the whole point of the federal law. And frankly, while we're talking about kids, um, earlier tonight after we passed the bill on second reading, you know, somebody who's paying really close attention to this, I, I think in a way is sort of, you know, hey, it's been a long day, cheer up, sent a really adorable picture of her newborn, uh, you know, one-year-old, maybe not even one-year-old, and, and, you know, the point being is when we do policy like this, when we talk about decarbonization, when we talk about no longer destroying our airshed and destroying our climate, yeah, those of us now who maybe, if we're lucky, have several decades left on the earth, we're going to benefit from that. But the way that I really think about it is little kids today, kids of friends I have in this room, kids of, of other people I know who are going to be alive at 2100. That is why we do this kind of work. No one bill is going to set right things we have been systemically getting wrong in how we live in this earth for 150 years. But we have to try because we owe things to people who are gonna come after us. We owe a habitable world. We, we owe taking the steps we can take now Thank you, Representative to clean Weissman. up how we live in the world. I ask for a no vote. Thank you. Representative Joseph. Thank you, Madam Chair. I also ask for a no vote on this particular amendment. 
Part of the issue, again, since we would be asking the state department to do this particular implementation, what would be required from a non-US manufacturer? And also, how would we verify that such information is correct? What would be the standard? So with all these things, I would say that I would ask for a no vote for this particular amendment. Also, I just wanted to say, as I shared previously to my, uh, with my colleague, that I understand his request, but ultimately doesn't fit within the bill at this time. I'm happy to work with him next year on a bill that would protect and further protect and promote children's right in Colorado and around the world. But I also wanted to note that the department, the US Department of Labor's Bureau of International Labor Affairs is also doing a lot of work in that field. It says that in 2021, $57 million actually was set aside to accelerate actions internationally to eliminate child labor and forced labor by supporting efforts by the global, uh, global community, including workers' organization, civil society, and also expanding access to social protection for vulnerable children, fostering companies' responsibility and accountability for their supply chains, and promoting respect for worker voice and order labor rights. So ultimately, this work is being done at the federal level already. So again, as I mentioned, please vote no on this particular amendment because it will frustrate the intent and purpose of the bill. Thank you. Representative Weinberg. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, just very simply enough, I, I don't know why there's so much trouble with this one. I, I really don't understand it. it. It's, we have a global crisis in Africa where people are being forced to mine materials that my children, my five-year-old and seven-year-old, will one day grow up and use. This is a simple amendment that protects the rights of children across the world and not abuse so that we can benefit. Talk about privilege. Talk about privilege. This is chaos to me. This is a simple amendment that literally protects people from around the world mining materials for us to use. I, I, I haven't heard one response as to why this amendment should not be put in place. This is a logical amendment, and I urge and I vote. Representative Armagost. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I can't echo this any louder. I don't, I don't understand why this is so hard to simply put in there as a backstop on this, where we can just simply say, we're willing to push this as hard as we can, but we're taking the high road and at least offering this as the evidence that we're doing the right thing in the right way. We have Clean Diamond Trade Act to prevent getting diamonds uh, federally. That we don't have to do that on a state level. It's not happening anymore. But this is still happening to get lithium and the components that we have in these, these batteries. Why is this? Why can't this just be in the bill? This is just something very simple. It looks really terrible that we're denying something so simple of being just that backstop of saying, we want to push this as hard as we can, but not so hard that we're affecting kids that are probably mining these elsewhere to, to get us these components that we really want to push for our state. It's a simple thing that we're avoiding looking like monsters. This is something where we can say, hey, we're doing the right thing to push what we're pushing so hard. We're at least not pushing hard enough to make, to make things come to us in a way that's immoral and unethical. I strongly encourage a yes vote on this amendment. 
Seeing no further discussion, the question before us is the winter amendment to the Committee of the Whole Report. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Representative Garcia, how do you vote? No. Representative Garcia votes no. Representative Morrow, how do you vote? No. Representative Morrow votes no. Representative Epps, how do you vote? No. Representative Epps votes no. Representative Sirota, how do you vote? No. Representative Sirota votes no. Representative Ricks, how do you vote? No. Representative Ricks votes no. Representative Herod, how do you vote? No. Representative Herod votes no. Please close the machine. With 24 aye, 37 no, and four excuse, the winter amendment is lost. There are no more amendments at the desk. The question before us is the adoption of the Committee of the Whole report. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Representative Morrow, how do you vote? No. Representative Morrow votes no. Representative Garcia, how do you vote? I'm sorry, yes, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, one moment, Representative Garcia. Representative Morrow, how do you vote on the Committee of the Whole report? Yes. Representative Morrow votes yes. Representative Garcia, how do you vote? Yes. Representative Garcia votes yes. Representative Epps, how do you vote? Yes. Representative Epps votes yes. Representative Sirota, how do you vote? Yes. Representative Sirota votes yes. Representative Ricks, how do you vote? Yes. Representative yes. Ricks votes yes. Representative Herod, how do you vote? Yes. Representative Herod votes yes. Please close the machine. With 42 aye, 19 no, and four excuse, the Committee of the Whole report is adopted. <laughs> Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, earlier when I moved House Bill 1078, I moved it to tomorrow. So I need to make a correction and move it to Monday. So this is what this process is. So, Madam Speaker, I move the House reconsider the last action taken on House Bill 1078, which was to lay the bill over until tomorrow, Saturday, April 22nd. Members, the motion before us is for the House to reconsider the last action taken on House Bill 1078, which was to lay the bill over until tomorrow, Saturday, April 22nd. This does require a two-thirds vote. Is there any objection to taking a voice vote? Yes. There is an objection. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Representative Garcia, how do you vote? Yes. Representative Garcia votes yes. Representative Morrow, how do you vote? Yes. Representative Morrow votes yes. Representative Epps, how do you vote? No. Representative Epps votes no. Representative Sirota, how do you vote? Yes. Representative Sirota votes yes. Representative Ricks, how do you vote? Yes. yes. Representative Ricks votes yes. Representative Herod, how do you vote? Yes. Representative Herod votes yes. Representative Soper and Story. Please close the machine. With 56 aye, five no, and four excused, the motion to reconsider is adopted. <laughs> Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move House Bill 1078 to be laid over until Monday, April 24th. Seeing no objection, House Bill 1078 will be laid over until Monday, April 24th. <laughs> Madam Majority Leader. I won't do it, I won't do it. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I move to lay over the balance of the calendar until Monday, April 24th. Seeing no objection, the balance of the calendar will be laid over until Monday, April 24th. <laughs> Members, we have business to read across the desk. You are free to leave. <clears throat> uh, Members, we are going to do a small special announcement first.
Representative Lindsay, it is now the time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Before we all head out on this snowy evening, we've got four birthdays at least, and if there's any on this side, please let me know. Um, Representative McCormick, Representative Brown, Representative Garcia, and Representative Bird. Um, they've all got birthdays this week, this weekend. Oh, minority, today? Well, you have to stand up, majority. Minority, uh, minority Leader, Leader Lynch, Lynch, it's your please. birthday today. Woo. All right, everyone, happy birthdays. So let's get to singing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Karen Kyle. Happy birthday to you. All right. One more announcement, Representative Froelich. Folks, if they have something in the fridge that means anything to you, go get it, because it's not going to be there on Monday. OK, Mr. Schiebel, now's your moment. Conference committee reports. First report of first conference committee on Senate Bill 220. This report amends the re-engrossed bill to the President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Mr. Schiebel, the conference committee reports will be printed in the journal. Introduction of bills. House Bill 1305 by Representatives Burton Bockefeld, also Senators Zenzinger and Kirkmeyer, concerning the program to provide the continuation of health benefits for dependents of certain local government public safety employees who die in a work-related death. House Bill 1305 will be assigned to the Committee on Appropriations. House Bill 1306 by Representatives Herod and Soper, concerning the use of social media administered by an elected official that is not supported by government resources and in connection therewith, allowing an elected official to restrict or bar an individual from using the social media administered by the elected official for any reason, including attempting to chill the speech of another individual. House Bill 1306 will be assigned to the Committee on State, Civic, Military, and Veterans Affairs. House Bill 1307 by Representatives Doherty and Soper, concerning enhanced supports for youth who are in detention. House Bill 1307 will be assigned to the Committee on Public and Behavioral Health and Human Services. Senate Bill 200 by Senator Winter F. Also, Representatives Frelick and Herod, concerning the utilization of automated vehicle identification systems for increased traffic law enforcement by certain jurisdictions and in connection therewith, making an appropriation. Senate Bill 200 is assigned to the Committee on Transportation, Housing, and Local Government. Senate Bill 273 by Senator Marchman, also Representatives Basenecker and McLaughlin, concerning the inclusion of agricultural land in urban renewal areas. Okay. Senate Bill 273 will be assigned to the Committee on Agriculture, Water, and Natural Resources. Representative McLaughlin will be removed as a House co-prime sponsor on Senate Bill 273. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move the House adjourn until 9 a.m. on Monday, April 24th. Seeing no objection, the House will stand in adjournment until 9 a.m. on Monday, April 24th.